Let's move on to the Panthers. And they needed uh, some help basically everywhere. Last year went 5-11. and 11. Uh, They traded away Teddy B. Teddy Bridgewater is gone to the Broncos, and they are stuck with uh, – uh, God, I just went blank. What's his name? Sam. Um, Sam Darnold. Sam Darnold. Thank you. Ghost Darnold. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, so they, they have decided to go all in with him. They did not draft a quarterback. Their needs were quarterback, offensive tackle, safety, and linebacker. And they got 11 picks, which I am always a fan of. When you are a bad football team, and they are, they are still building. Now, obviously, I love Matt Rule. Uh, I love Joe Brady. I love, you know, everything that those guys are doing, what they're putting together. And this is what the Texans should have done, which is acquire as many picks as you possibly can. Don't trade up to go get anybody. Just draft what you got and and trade back even if you have to. Just acquire as many picks as possible. And that's what they did. They got 11 draft picks. Uh, We'll roll through them all. Cornerback J.C. Horn in the first round, number eight out of South Carolina. Uh, That was an odd pick because he is much more of a, a press cover man and... Obviously, uh, they don't run that a lot. They they run a yeah. lot of zone coverages, so it, it was exactly. a strange fit. But, hey, if you think, you know, if that's the guy, you got to go get the guy. Wide receiver Terrace Marshall Jr. out of LSU in the second round. I think that was a fantastic pick. They needed a, yes. a good wide receiver to uh, to continue boosting up that room, and they got it. Offensive tackle Brady Christensen out of BYU uh, in the third round. Third round also, tight end Tommy Trimble out of Notre Dame. Love that pick. Running back Chuba Hubbard in the fourth out of Oklahoma State. Uh, Davion Nixon out of Iowa, an interior defensive lineman uh, in the fifth round. Fifth round again, cornerback Keith Taylor out of Washington, another good, strong player that, you know, I I think could develop. They got uh, offensive guard Deontay Brown out of Alabama in the sixth round. Wide receiver Shai Smith out of South Carolina, who uh, that was a strange one, but he, I mean, he's super athletic. Like, he's a guy you can take a flyer on late sixth round. I mean, he's below 200 picks. Uh, Long snapper Thomas Fletcher out of Alabama in the sixth round. Don't really know why you draft a long snapper, but, hey, you know what? If you're going to do it, go get the guy that won the award for it last year, I guess. And then in the seventh round, uh, interior defensive lineman Phil Hoskins out of Kentucky. I I kind of like this draft a lot. I was a big fan of this. I, I didn't, you know, I, I don't really understand the J.C. Horn thing, but Terrace Marshall is somebody that's got first-round talent. Brady Christensen, yeah. I thought they got a deal on. Uh, Tommy Trimble, I think, is a really good time. I, I think that they are rebuilding their roster the way that you should when you know that you're not great and you just need to take as many bites as the apple as possible. Yeah, this is a case where I like the players they got, and I think they got great players, but I hate the strategy just for them. First of all, this team could not stop the run to save their life. Their defense was on the field forever. And, oh, yeah, you're picking eighth, and your quarterback is Sam Bleeping Darnold. You need to take a quarterback. <laughs> Sam Darnold is God, awful. I mean, he's done. That Monday night game was the end for him. Once he got scared on the feet, that was it. Once he got caught on camera saying, I'm seeing ghosts out there on Monday night football, stick a fork in him, it's done. Completely done. So you trade away Teddy Bridgewater, who I think is grossly underrated, and I thought was pretty solid for them. The problem is they just didn't have protection, and Christian McCaffrey was gone for a while, but their offense was not Carolina's problem. It's that defense. And you're right. They're a cover-two zone defense type of team, and they bring in a man corner who really kind of went higher than he was on anybody's board there in J.C. Horn. I would have loved to see them go after interior defensive linemen or a quarterback at the spot. That's where you're going to do to help your team. I mean, Justin Fields is sitting there. Who would you rather have? Justin Fields or the Lego policeman himself, Sam Darnold. I swear, look at a picture of him. He looks just like a Lego policeman. Honest to God, (laughs) all my life. He looks just like so even though I like the players, I think Corn is good. You're absolutely right about Terrace Marshall Jr. What, 23 touchdowns in two years at LSU, reunites with Joe Brady. I love all of that stuff there. I like the players. I just didn't like the strategy, so I'm a little bit down on it. I wanted to see – I, I believe in building teams from the inside out and a quarterback. They need a lot that's, of help that's in the, the interior old of that defense. That's the so, old school the old way school. of doing well, it. I'm an old man. Yeah. I'm an old uh, man. Hey, you know, I look it. young and beautiful. I'm actually old, you know. <laughs> So, so Kyle, I'm with you on this, but the problem is, is that eight now outside of fields, the, I can't explain the fields argument. Okay. You should have yeah. taken Justin Fields here and we're done. Yeah. Um, yeah. But the, the argument is, is if you're not going with fields and you are in on, we're going to see if there's anything left in, 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 um, in Darnold sank and, and can we make him a quarterback or not? 
if that's your decision, you can't take a defensive uh, uh, tackle here because in this draft, there was no defensive tackle that's worthy. True. There's no edge, there's no run stuffer in this draft. Now you're taking for need and you're taking somebody grossly that doesn't fit your scheme. Sure. The, the, the Joe Horn thing, all of the big boards, all of the people who make mock drafts and talk about this stuff had Horn not as the top cornerback, but over 50. I listened to, uh, oh, uh, golly, who's the guy from the NFL Network that I listened to, Gary? I talked about it on our podcast. Uh, you talking about Peter Schrager or? Uh, Peter Schrager. Yeah. Peter Schrager said he talked to over 50% of the leagues, and they all had Horn. It's before the draft, by the way. They all had mm-hmm. Horn as their number one cornerback on the board they think he can do everything and they're not worried about how he played in south carolina and will muschamp system they're not concerned about that at all they think he's capable of doing anything so what what mel kuyper has on his board and rich eisen has on his board aren't what these nfl teams have so i I thought it was interesting that over 50 percent of the league did have horn as their number one guy just just the draft experts, quote-unquote, didn't. Um, right. Terrence Marshall, in any other draft in the last five years, he's a first-round pick, and it ain't close. Yeah. It ain't close. Yeah. This draft was so wide receiver heavy with top-tier talent, that's the only reason he fell to the second. And that's just right. an absolute steal. And not necessarily like Notre Dame or Wisconsin used to be, but the offensive line at BYU was unbelievable they mauled people now i know the people are going to say all the competition they played it don't matter the guy that got put in front of them they destroyed every time and it's because they have dad strength okay they're not 19 (laughs) and 20 year olds they're 25 years old all right right this guy's going to be able to come into the league and he's going to be able to help that offensive line right now tomorrow yeah i like what they did i like the players the needs that they had just weren't available in this draft. And so I don't know if they're getting them in, 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 in free agency or whatever. I would have yeah. rather them taken fields over horn, but at mm-hmm. the same time, you know, that they, th- Joe Brady thinks he's got something in Darren Darnold. I'm going to tell you this. And I've told Gary this before. If Joe Brady can win with Sam Darnold as his quarterback this year, Joe Brady has a lottery ticket for next year, and he can walk yep. into any of probably 25 of the 32 rooms that he wants in the NFL and tell the head coach, pack your shit, get out. I'm taking this job. <laughs> He's going to be taking over Cincinnati with uh, yeah. with Jamal I, I really Burrow. do think that if he can – if he can – If we can see a drastic turnaround with Sam Darnold, I think Joe Brady can walk into almost any franchise and tell the owner, tell the coach to pack his shit. I'm taking this stop. And and if that happens, we're erasing this tape because I just bagged the hell out of Sam Darnold. So if he turns around and throws 30 touchdowns and 10 picks, delete the tapes. Delete the damn tapes. Listen, that tells you this. That tells you this, (laughs) that Adam Gase should be hurled off the tallest building in the country. Oh, my God. Just grabbed by his collar and his belt loop and thrown off yes. the building. <laughs> Worst head coach in the history of the NFL. No, 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 no. That's not true. That's not true. Freddie Kitchens, the single worst okay. head coach that coached 16 games <laughs> okay. in the NFL. And that ain't close, by the way. Adam Gase coaches circles around Freddie Kitchens. <laughs> wow. That's that coming from a Browns. You see the Browns logo behind him there. Yes, That's I it. see it. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.